So now we've been sharing along the lines of keys to a peaceful marriage and home. Someone say peaceful. peaceful. I know I embellish that a little bit because, because it's so important. And so, um, again, it's so important that we not just be hearers, but we're doers of God's word. So, so far, we've looked at, a, we looked at becoming a whole and peaceful person. We looked at developing a healthy self-image, men as leaders and protectors. We did a message also called Men Protect Your Seed. We looked at the principle of submission that's applicable to everybody. We looked at developing a winning attitude, the husband superpower, the wife superpower, the peace of God, restoring family unity. Last week we looked at your words, prayers, and forgiveness. And before I go on, forgiveness is really critical in all of our lives. You know, because in family, notice in your family, those are the people closest to you. So the people who potentially can hurt you the most is who? Fam your family. And so sometimes, a lot of time, it's not so much the big things that get us in trouble. Sometimes it's just a small thing. Let's say my wife might have said something to me and I didn't like the way she said it. What she said wasn't wrong, but the way she said it got to me. And you know, then I could let that get inside my heart and then it creates unforgiveness and bitterness. I've got to, so I've got to God, keep those things out of me. So in a family, it's really important to be forgiving, constantly forgiving and developing kindness. In our family, we make sure from day one that we don't, we don't gossip about other people. So uh, we don't, other family members, we don't do any of that. He's, I listen to me. Why? See, I want our home to be one of peace. So it's really, really important how that we're forgiving one another. How you talk about your family members is really important. Yes, we're going to be hurt. We're going to be offended in different ways. But we've got to keep short accounts and keep our hearts clean from unforgiveness. So this area of, un of forgiveness is very critical in all of our lives. Amen, somebody? So today, let's move into what I'm going to share today. We're going to talk about honoring God. Those of you online, you're seeing the title on the screen, Honoring God. And so, well, you know, one of the things, if we're going to have peace in our home, I know you're initially going to think, well, what does that have to do with peace in our home? You understand, we've got to trust God for everything. You know, when you got born again, it wasn't just to get to heaven, but you were saying, Jesus, you're Lord of my life, and I'm trusting you to be the source of my life. And one of the things that's important is establishing honor. The Bible talks about honor in different ways. You know, Scripture says in Hebrews chapter 13, marriage is honorable and the bed is pure and undefiled. So we want to be honorable in our marriage relationship. As I say that now, those of you who are young people and you plan to get married, you have to marry someone who believes in marriage. Right. There's people that sometimes they get in marriage, but they don't really have a conviction about marriage, that I want to be married and stay married. You see, so some people, they get in married and they've, always, they've, always, they've already got an exit clause. Well, you don't want that kind of person. You want to make sure that, and that's why it's so important that you, you um, connect with people who have very similar convictions. I tell you, when, when I marry a couple that comes to me, and normally it's got to be someone who is in this church, I've done it from outside, but one of the things I, I ask them to do this, I tell them to do this, if you want me to marry, you've got to give me one, um, give me this one thing to do, this um, one, this is my word here, you've got to allow me that if I feel after, that you both are not right for one another, that I can say it to you. And why I do that is because if they, if they say yes to that, I know they're serious about my counsel. And they're serious about one another. Does that make sense? And I find when we're serious right up front, then, you know, I've married, the couples we've married, we've got a pretty good average, pretty good, you know, completion rate that they're still together. And there's one or two that fell apart. But what I'm saying is when you do it right from the beginning, Again, going back to what we said, couples or people that believe in marriage. When you've got that as a conviction and it's strong on the inside of you, then you've got a strong probability of staying together because you believe that marriage is final. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, I'm not saying they're not exceptions or whatever. You've got to have to work at it. Anyone who's married for, for a number of years, you've had to work at it. Right? You've had to work at it. It, it didn't just happen. You have to overcome certain things. You have to be walk in love. You have to say a lot of, sorry, honey, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> forgive me right now. Forgive me. 
You know, we've been married over 30 years. I better get down on my knees and say, you know, I've got to say, I'm sorry right now. Why? For the next 30 years. Let me just, you know, let's put that in the account. Say, uh, put, it, put it in our credit. You know. What I'm saying, though, you've got to be willing that, you know, I'm, I'm in this. I believe in it. And I'm going to be willing to be teachable, learn different things so that I'm working. We're working together. Are you listening? We, we're growing together. And so there's honor. Bible talks about honor in marriage. Talks about teaching our children to honor. We're going to talk a bit about that, I believe, next week. About children honoring their parents. Talks about honoring those in authority. That's why I'm, I've trained myself not to criticize um, those in authority. Let's say a lot, some problem is saying this. There's a lot of Christians speaking down about our present prime minister. Justin Trudeau. I was just in a meeting. I heard someone say, well, you're prime minister. You know, Justin Trudeau, I don't know about him. Well, see, a lot of that is this. Why? He doesn't come under the conservative label. So what are they doing? Talking him down. Well, you can't talk, you can't talk down someone in authority and pray for them at the same time. That's not going to work. So, so, we're, so we've taught here that we're not political. By that I mean, yes, we're involved in the political process. But we're not extreme in saying you've got to be a liberal, you've got to be a conservative, you've got to be an NDP. No, I'm praying for whoever is in authority. Does that make sense? And so all of these things is respecting and honoring those in authority. That's all contributing to the peace that we walk in and we experience. Amen? And so now one of the areas God's commanded us to obey him and honor him though is in our finances. And what I found is the more honorable and obedient we are as families, that starts individually but also as a local church, is the more of the blessing of God and the peace of God we'll experience in our homes and in our families. So we're going to look specifically today at um, honoring God with the tithe and we're going to look at the purpose of the tithe so you understand it a bit more better. And what you're going to find is this. See, obedience to the word of God will drive fear out of our lives. And so our faith, think about this now, our faith must be in God. Where must our faith be? In God, in God not people. Now, the scripture teaches us about, you know, cursed is the man whose trust is in man. That's interesting. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. And then another scripture in Psalm, don't, don't turn to it, Psalms 34 it says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man whose trust is in him. So where does God want our trust? In him. So think about it. Now, that's, he wants our trust in him. So if you're, let's say you're a single person looking for a mate, then who should you be trusting? You got to trust him that somehow he'll connect you to the right person. And that you don't have to be, you don't have to, um, compromise certain standards to get married. You gotta trust him. Those of you looking for a job, you may be in a position that you believe your, your skills are more suited for something better. Well, be the right person, be an honest person, where you are, serve to the best of your ability, and believe God, trust God to open the right door for you. You see what I'm saying? Where you're not gonna have to be um, illegal, <laughs> or do something illegal or wrong to get up. So in the world, again, oh, you don't have to rip people off. You know, we've had vehicles in the past, the early part of our marriage, where I was dealing with someone, and they claimed to be a Christian. Years ago, I told people, if, that's, if you say, if you're a salesperson, and the only reason you can say, you tell me to have business because you're a Christian, I will run from you. <laughs> no, it's going to take more than that Christian label. I've got to know that you're a person of integrity. I've got to know that you, you will stand by your word that you're producing the very best product that you can produce and give to me or the very best service. Do you hear me, everybody? And so we're talking about honor here, but we're talking about tr everything is about we're trusting God for everything. So our homes, what, in a, the progression of our homes, the development of our homes, and God knows he wants you to trust him when you have children. That's going to take a lot of trust <laughs> to, you know, to see those children grow up. So we're trusting God for everything. Someone say everything. everything. 
everything. So let's look today at the tithe and the purpose of the tithe. And let's start here. Um, don't turn to the scripture. I'm gonna, we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 3 to begin. I'm going to allude to some scriptures, but don't turn. I'll tell you which one to turn to. It's interesting in the, we're told that we are the seed of Abraham. And it's interesting that in Genesis chapter 14, verse 20, it says, Abraham gave tithes of all. Someone say all. all. Of all. So that means it was, he didn't just give tithes on a paycheck, but on everything that God blessed him with. Someone say everything. Everything. And then it says in Genesis 24, I believe, at the end of Abraham's life, it says this, an amazing statement. It says, God blessed Abraham in all all things so you know the objective the goal has god has for our life is this at the end of our lives we'll be able to look at our lives and see god's blessing everywhere Amen. that's what we want yes. so not just financially materially but spiritually in our walk with god our children are products of the blessings of god everything we do is blessed and so that's what it says about a man who honored god with everything and in everything it says god blessed him in all things someone say all things, all things. and so god wants um, couples he wants families to trust him for everything and that includes to trust him financially by giving the tithe now, i'm going to look at this don't turn to it but luke 16 verse 12 to 14 it says if you've not been faithful Faithful in the unrighteous mammon that's m money who will give to you the true riches so so God is looking at how can he trust us with money first is not that interesting and so God wants us to trust him and in this area he wants us to think as he does not as the world and let just say as a disclaim disclaim i need you to to hear my heart on this i'm not sharing this because i'm trying to get money out of you so, so please and i know most of you would know that by now because you know me well enough but i'm teaching you god's word um, so that you can cooperate with his way with his will for, with his financial plan for your life you know me we never beg we never no one can come up here and use this pulpit to beg people or manipulate people or threaten people we don't do that right. you hear what i'm saying i would do something myself to get self to get money than to do that right. i'm not going to dishonor god that way or dishonor god's people but the thing is this god wants us to be have right thinking in this area can i hear an amen somebody amen. So we're going to look into this area, and I know I'm talking to people whose hearts are open to this, but I'm sharing it with what God put in my heart to share with you, and I believe it's going to really bless our lives. So again, we're the seed of Abraham, and God wants our lives to be blessed in every area like his was. But let me say it again, we've got to think right. Someone say think right. Think right. We've got to think right about this area and put God first in our giving. Now it's amazing how how we know a lot of people, including a lot of Christians, don't think right about God because they don't put him first. So we'll have the best, we'll, have the, we'll drive the best car, we'll have the best uh, TV screen, but we'll, we won't give God first. Someone say first. first. You know, if you go to the movies, what does it cost? Over $10 just to get a box of uh, popcorn or whatever. You, know, you, know, you got the movie plus the popcorn. So we think nothing of doing that. But those same people will dishonor God financially and expect his blessing on their lives. No, we want to cooperate with the way God does things. Amen. We talk about putting God first. Now remember, Jesus gave his all. And all God is saying, will you put me first? That's the life of a believer. Amen. And we've learned as a, as a couple, we've learned to um, put God first, to be sometimes in many ways sacrificial in our giving but we've seen the goodness of God in our lives mm -hmm. that somehow things have worked out as we put him first we've done some things that some people naturally would think is crazy to do but just obeying God mm -hmm. and I'm not just talking about giving to the church but just being a blessing now as I say think about that some of you have pa parents or family like mine that um, as I think about it we had over the years I don't know how many people come through our house when they got into this country so you some you know because you know what it's like some you had so we had people stay in our house occupied a bedroom some of them a month some of them three months some of them six months until they got settled in this country see that's part of what that giving attitude 
willing to give of your food space to help another family. I don't know how many. That must be, I, it's it's got to be a whole, so well over a dozen, probably 20 people we've helped, that my parents helped in coming to this country. And see, that's part of that giving spirit. But they're willing to say, you know what? I'm here. God allowed me to be blessed to be here. You know what? I want to help you. And there was no strings attached to it. Isn't that wonderful? That's, that's the right spirit, right? And so now, Proverbs chapter 3. Someone turn to that. I like the tune there. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Praise God. Now, as I say that, we talk about the time. Let me also say this. See, I get a, I'm going to say a modest salary from the ministry that's set by a board of directors. And let me say this. Suppose someone says, well, you know, if, if someone j said, I'm, you know, my tithe is a million dollars. All of a sudden, or they wanted to give a million dollars. I couldn't just change my salary. And plus, it's stipulated in our board, our bylaws. This is what we're, this ministry is for. It's to build, it's to, well, the first one is to build and establish churches through training pastors. That's, uh, that's the, the mandate for this ministry. So everything's got to be under that. Is anyone, and we made sure even there's a character clause in our bylaws. See, because when, I, when the Lord said, you know, you're a pastor, you're a minister, I wanted to make sure I put myself under authority. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Because if I'm, because I, I want to be trustworthy. So that's in our bylaws. <laughs> so I want to do that. Why? The work of God is serious. Our character is serious. It matters what we do, that people can trust us, that no matter what comes in, that we're, we're under authority. And so we have a very a loving board of directors that loves God, that loves Jesus, that just wants to do the work of God. And you need to know that. Amen? So Proverbs chapter 3. The first purpose of the tithe is to honor God. You write that down somewhere. Proverbs chapter 3. Talking about honoring God. So you may have a part-time job. You might be a student today. You might have a full-time job. You may have your own business. So no matter what your situation is as far as employment, God wants you to honor Him. So the 10% of what comes into your hands is the tithe. Again, whatever your status is. So it, no matter what that amount is, God wants you to honor him with the tithe. So Proverbs chapter 3. Better get to it myself. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Some of you have heard Pastor Colleen. This is probably your favorite scripture on this subject. It says, honor the Lord. Say the word, honor the Lord with your possessions. And with the first fruits of your increase. Right? First fruits. Someone say first. first. Notice it says first. So the number one purpose of the tithe is to honor the Lord. So write that down somewhere. That's number one. You give because of honor. You love the Lord. You honor the Lord. So it's the first part of all your increase. Someone say all. 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 So we tithe. And also what we do as a church, as a ministry, 10% of what comes in, we send it out to the ministry that God's connected us to and told us to, to be connected to and receive from. So, and I looked at the last six months, I asked them to look at me the numbers on what came in, or what we sent out, sorry, and it was well over 10% of what came in. So you see, so when you're tithing, we're not, it's not all coming in. We're always saying, Lord, we want to be a blessing. You know, who do you want us to help? Who do you want us to be a blessing to? Who do you want us to be a, 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 a blessing to? See, because that's the heart of God. Amen? And so again, we take at least 10% of what comes in at the end of the month or sometime through the month, and we send it out to be a blessing. And like you, people say, well, I have needs. Well, everybody has needs, <laughs> right? We have needs, you have needs, our church has needs. But we've got to say, but, but God will cause more to come to you as you trust him. Someone say trust him. Trust him. Say it again, trust him. trust him. So regardless of who you are and what you do, God will bless you as you trust him. That's right. right? That's what he, that's the, so the whole issue of the tithe is, Lord, you're my source and I'm trusting you. Yes. I, I'm trusting you. So we're talking about honoring God. Say it again, honor God. Honor God. 
So it's about honoring God, obeying God, and then seeing him bless your life. Amen. Again, not about anybody twisting you. Not anybody. So this is not, I'm not trying to lay a heavy on anything or anyone. I'm just putting forth this word of God so that you can say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. And God wants us to be a family. And you've got to see this. Your family personally must be a, choose to be a family of honor. Right? Just like all the other things we talked about in being um, men loving their wives, um, husbands loving their, uh, wives loving their husbands. And wa us walking in submission to one another, so un unselfishly serving and loving one another, forgiving one another. Well, this area, a family that honors God, is going places. We've got to be an honorable people. So the number one reason we tithe is to do what? Honor. Say it one more time. Honor. honor God. So you've got to make a decision. God, I'm going to honor you. And you realize a teenager can do that. In a part-time, a student can do that. You could be in university, college, and you say, you know what? I'm going to honor God. As, a God, as he, God, everything that comes into my hands, you are my source. You could be facing a situation right now, and you don't know how you're going to get from here to there. But if you'll make the decision, God, I'm, I'm trusting you. I think about it. We see the story of Jacob, I believe, in um, Genesis 28, verse 18 to 20. He was about to go on a journey away from his family. He wouldn't have the, the support of his family at that time. And he makes an amazing statement. He says, God, if you'll be with me in this way that I go. And he says, if you'll take care of me, provide food for me, take care of me, then I, I guarantee you, I promise, I will honor you with the tithe. Isn't that amazing? Well, where did he learn that? He must have learned it from his father, Isaac. Where did he learn it? He must have learned it from his father, Abraham. So God wants families to honor him. And one of the ways, major ways we honor him is through the tithe. Amen? Amen. Number two. Number one, the second reason for the tithe is to supply God's house with what it needs. To supply God's house. Write that down somewhere. It is, to, number one, to honor God. Number two, to supply God's house with what it needs. Everyone got that? So you bring your supply to the local church God has made you a part of. Now go to Agai chapter 1. Agai chapter 1. This is really important. See, every person in a local church is important and has a part to play. It's like in a family. Um, you raise your children to have chores and duties. You, you teach them to do what? Take care of their room. Open up Lizzie's room when she was younger. What, you, what, what is that mess? What is, what is this war zone? What's going on in this place here? So now you expect them to clean up their room. Everyone got that? But then even beyond that, you give them some additional responsibility. It's wonderful to see them take the responsibility, cleaning, cleaning the mirrors, vacuuming the floor, um, taking care of the dishes. So... Everyone has responsibilities in the home. Does everyone make sense? You know, let's say men are usually the garbage men. I tell so I'm the garbage person. I, I take out the garbage in the house. See, that's all serving. That's what we do. It's funny, my wife, she, the garbage is under the kitchen. And um, she says, Carl, the garbage is full. And in my mind, I'm thinking, um, I, you know, you waited for me to get home to tell me that? Like, couldn't we, like, you, you mean you couldn't have at least tied it up and put it in, you know, like a, in the laundry room and then I would, I would, I don't mind taking it out to the garbage? You know what I mean? And so she's saying sometimes, yeah, sometimes they'll just put it just barely outside the door and then, you know, I've got to come and take it. But you know what? I'm not, there's no fuss because I'm the garbage man. That's my job. <laughs> but what I'm saying, in a family though, and we could all connect to this because you know we all have our different responsibilities, that everybody, someone say everybody. Everybody. Everybody has their part. And so your part, so, so um, what I'm saying then is not too strange for all of us. In a local church, everybody, someone say everybody. Everybody. Everybody has a part. Right? You have a part to do. You came in, you met Kishmar, who greeted you. Well, that, what is he doing? He came about an hour early, or 45 minutes, to do his part. And we're grateful. Right? He's, he decided, you know what? Yeah, I want to help pastor, my pastors. I want to help my church family. I, I don't mind getting up early and be here, Pastor God, to be a blessing. Well, praise God. Thank God for that. So that's someone doing their part. 
Turn to someone, tell them everybody's needed. needed. Tell them everybody's got a part. Amen. So we have, let's say, in this local church, we have ushers, we have cleaning, we have hospitality, we have children's ministry. Everybody. Mm -hmm. We have audiovisual. We're so great, I'm telling you, we're so grateful for committed people who don't just come and say, you know what? I've got a part. God sent me here to be a part of this family, and I've got a part. And not just that, I'm willing to do my part. Isn't that wonderful? So that's why this number two is really important. The second number one purpose of the tithe is to honor God. Number two is to supply God's house with what it needs. Everyone got that? And so um, God's house has needs just like your house has needs. Everyone see that? And so the, the tithe brings the supply of finances into the local church. And so in um, Agai chapter one, I said, right, listen to this scripture, quite, 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 quite interesting. Agai, if you go to Malachi and go backwards, you'll find it. Agai chapter one, verse two, it says, thus says, says the Lord, saying this people says this, the time has not come the time that the Lord's house should be built. So they're saying, you know what? You know, God's house shouldn't be built now. Let's put it off. Then the word of the Lord, verse 3, came to Agai the prophet saying, Is it time for your, you yourselves to dwell in paneled houses and this temple to lie in ruins? Now, of course, we know this is the old covenant. And in the new covenant, we are the house of God. Right? We are the temple of God. So, so we know that. Uh, but the, there's lessons here that are still relevant and important. And so he says now, is it time for your houses to be built and the temple of God is ruined? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. So he's getting them to think. He says, you know what? Consider how you're thinking. Mm-hmm. Consider your ways and what you're doing. You've sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you don't have enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. So now it says, doing it your way, where you just put yourself first and you ignore God's house. Notice he says, what you're earning doesn't do what you planned for it to do. This breaks down, this breaks down, this expense comes up. So what happens, you're in a worse case than, than what you thought you'd be in. Why? Because you're doing it your way. Verse 7, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. He said it again, I want you to think of it. Consider your ways. So he's confronting them with, a, with loving heart to say, listen, consider your ways. The way you're doing it isn't working. I've got a better way. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that I may make take take pleasure in it and be glorified says the Lord you looked for much but it did it came to little when you brought it home I blew blew it away why says the Lord of hosts because my house that is in ruin while every one of you runs to his own house look at that in other words my house is look your house is beautiful Their life was only consumed with their house, their well-being, their own objectives, and they had very little thinking and consideration for God's house, God's work. Then he says, therefore the heavens above you withhold the dew, look at that, and the earth withholds its fruit. Isn't it saying, God's saying, you know what? There's things I want to bring in your lives, but the way you're doing things, the way you're treating my house, is preventing me from blessing you the way I want to. Isn't that, isn't that, that's what he's saying. This is pretty serious stuff here. So they were coming up short and he's telling them, I want you to consider your way. So again, they were considering only their own house and they weren't thinking about God's house. And so our thinking as believers must be this. Lord, every now and then we've got to assess and say, Lord, everything I have belongs to you. That's God. And we've got to say, are you willing to let go of the most prized possession for God. Every now and then we've got to do that because, see, we can get to a place 
where you, you're successful, you've got different things going, you've got these resources under your hands, and if you're not careful, your faith is in that. Mm -hmm. Your trust is in those things. So we've got to really do a, a, a heart check every now and then. And so there is a supply that God needs then to come to his house, to come into, so that the needs of his house are met. Everyone got that? So again, number one reason for the tithe is what? Honor. Honor God. Number two is to supply God's house with what it needs. And in, um, turn to this scripture, Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. It's another scripture that talks about the, um, the purpose of the tithe. Are we hearing this today? Amen. This is really important. And why this is why where we're at, even as a local church ministry, getting ahead of myself, so certain things we're making a transition, not just go into the um, music, um, what do you call it, uh, loop community, but going also into live worship, to making those transitions and, you know, having or not just uh, having worship leaders and young, you know, who are passionate about the things of God and leading worship, children's ministry. There's young adults outreach. So all of these things, see God's house needs resources. You see that camera right there? That's a couple thousand dollars right there, that, that one camera. That, just someone say one, just one, wow. just one camera. See, so that little, that, the Atemi box, that was what, seven, $700 just for that little box. So different things cost things, right? Now again, I'm not laying a heavy on anybody. I'm just letting you know, the people of God who say, God, I care about your work. We care about what you want to get done through this church. You help to make it happen. You're taking, you're doing your part to say, Lord, to make, to see the work of God grow and develop. See that children's ministry room? There's different things that's necessary because we love the children. And we've got to do even more. We've got to have, make a massive investment into children. You know what I'm saying? So that if, because if God's bringing children, we want to make sure it's the best room. I told you how the ladies, couple of the pastor and the sister Chantel went there and they did something to the room to get it going. Um, we want to, to, to make it the very best that it can be. Why? We want our children to know we love them, we care about them, we want a safe, clean space, not dirty or smelly. You know, they're not an afterthought. They are front and center in our minds. Amen. So then, if, and then as this place fills up, then we want a bigger space with a bigger children's ministry with children's workers and qualified children's workers who love children but are qualified. Someone say qualified. qualified. They have skills and gifts. That means you're going to have a support staff of people who are assisting the pastors. Some of them will be paid staff. Why? Because that's all part of a vision. Do you hear what I'm saying? Why? Because we're thinking, Lord, we're not just thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about the next generation. How do we invest in uh, the young adults to make sure that they're taken care of and they're being ministered to? So that's what we're talking about here in building the church, building the ministry, building God's house with people who have God's heart. Amen. Someone say God's heart. So that's all about the tithe. It's all about honoring God. Everyone got that? Amen. So I said to you, um, Malachi chapter 3, I did say that, right? Malachi chapter 3, we're, we're doing pretty good on time. Malachi chapter 3, you guys have been real good today, so I'm good on my time. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. Look at this. It says, Will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me? But you say, In what way have we robbed you? And he tells them, In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me for this, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food, King James says, meat, in my house. And try me now. See, meat is this, we could say, paralleling, that's the spiritual food that God's people can come and be ministered to. So that's why now when people give into the local church, then they're giving to the support of God's word. They've got ministry gifts that will minister God's word to them. Ministry gifts that are not so tired they can't wait on God to get the right word to minister to God's people. See, so they're investing in that and it's helping them. They meet in my house and he says, and, and try me now. See, prove me. 
If I'll not open you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there'll not be room to receive it. So he's telling them, listen, you've been hurt because of your own ways. You didn't put me first, so my blessing wasn't upon you the way I intended it to be. Why? You were self-centered. You didn't care about my work, my house, my ministry. Everyone got that? So again, if every... Uh, would would be met. Everyone got that? And so, um, so the um, the provision of God's house is supplied by the tithes of God's people. Now that's different. And I think about what I'm about to say. That's why God isn't supporting if we have chicken dinners to get money for God's house. People can do that, but that's not God's best. That's only that people only resort to that. Because God's people don't support his work. Is, is anyone hear what I'm saying? So God's best is God's house is supported by the tithes of God's people. Someone say my tithes. My tithes. See, the tithes of God's people. Amen. So people who care enough to supply God's house with their finances so that the pastors can give themselves to the word of God so that people can receive the meat of God's word on a constant, consistent basis. Everyone got that? Um... Let me go on down. Go to Second Chronicles chapter 29. Just a couple of things before we go. So when you provide, so again, real pastors, they're not after people's money. So that's why you got to be careful. I, I know there's people that do that, and sometimes the media will highlight. I saw a crazy story this week about, uh, well, let's not get into that. We won't say <laughs> Let's keep the positive in front of you. But the thing is this, so real pastors are about the benefit of God's people, all right? And there's a transparency that we will have before you. We're not hiding stuff. We're not hiding what we're doing. No, it's, it's always transparent. You've got a question? I'll answer it. Amen. And so, um, again, when you provide correctly for your church, you allow us to be able to do the things we need to do as a church. So again, everything takes money, having a, right, a sound system. Maybe you're glad we don't, a sound system isn't creaky or cracked. I'm not saying it's perfect, but you know, it's not popping. You go some places and it's popping and you know, all these guys, and it's uncomfortable. No, all of that takes the, the finances of God's people. Mm -hmm. I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, we gave to a ministry that in, in India is getting housing. Think about this, for young girls, so they're off the street and helping them. I read a report. I don't know if it's the same girls. They're not only getting their BAs, but going on to their masters. Man, isn't that powerful? Now think about that. Now, I never told you that we gave to that. You know, there's some things will happen, and you'll just give in to that. Now, our board knows what we do, because we, you know, we have a list of what, how the, what we give in to the end of the year. But what I'm saying, that's, be, that's only possible because of the tithes and offerings of God's people. Think about that. Yeah, we've given to the ministry in China. Mexico, thank you. Training pastors in, in Mexico. Haiti, thank you, dear. So, she, <laughs> so what I'm saying, you, you're making this happen. So what I'm saying, just because you know, we, we've got to do a better job in telling you this, we will be doing that better. But these things are happening. So you're, you're, think about this commission and saying, well, Lord, you're not that large of a church, but you've been having a great impact. You helped a minister go to Albania and supported him. And I looked at what we gave to, to a minister, and it was a few thousand dollars last year. What you gave. Isn't that wonderful? Because we give generously when someone, and someone comes, a ministry gift comes here, and one of our policies is if we say all of this offering is going to this person, we don't take expenses out of it. We don't take the hotel expense, the air expense. We don't take it out of it. If in, on this day, if you give $2,000 into that, then we say all of that goes to them. Now, of course, in some situations, if p people never gave to the expenses, then guess whose pocket it came out of? Some of the time it came out of our, our pocket. You understand what I'm saying? Why? Because we want to make sure we treat them right. Does anyone hear what I'm saying? But I'm saying all of this, I'm just helping you know, this is almost like a family talk today a little bit, because we want you to know the heart of the ministry, the heart of serving, but also get in your heart that we're not just thinking about us and here, we're talking about a progression. 
and that the children are going to be ministered to every every facet you know the elderly men everybody ministered because we're a church that god you know cares about and we're doing god's will and you know that we're in a nice place here today Amen. and by the way isn't it good that you have men and women's washroom w women don't have to share washrooms or it's that's a nice smelling washroom that's really important to us so we like to bring the people of god into a nice place someone say a nice place nice place amen and so um we're talking about everybody let me say this before we go to second chronicles everybody um about the tithe and everybody honoring god with the tithe so your tithe could be 25 cents a week it could be three dollars could be ten dollars a week for some people it might be a hundred dollars a week someone might be five hundred dollars a week because someone makes what five thousand dollars a week and so their tithe would be five thousand dollars that's ten percent right so whatever it is it's just saying lord I'm honoring you with the tenth. And it's not looking down on your tithe or comparing ourselves with somebody else. None of that socially or whatever someone drives, not looking at any of that. It's the heart. Lord, I'm going to honor you. So every person, every family in Foundation for Life, honoring God with the tithe and by so doing, bringing the supply that this local church has. Amen? Or needs, excuse me, to do God's work. Okay, Second Chronicles chapter 29. Second Chronicles chapter 29. Second Chronicles chapter 29, please. Verse 1 to 3. I just want you to catch the heart of this. We won't be able to get into all of it. In the, the background to this, the previous king, the Bible says he didn't do right. And in fact, he, he, he brought garbage into the house of God. So he was dishonorable. But it says in Ezekiah, in Ezekiah now, he becomes king. So Second Chronicles 29, Ezekiah became king when he was 25 years old. And he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. I think it's interesting, it mentions his age. He was, he was a young man when he started. See, so you can honor God whether you're young or old. And just because you're old, it doesn't mean you automatically honor God. That's why I say you can be a teenager right now and you can honor God. You can make the decision, I'm going to honor God today. Amen. You can make a decision. I told you, as a young man, you can make a decision. I'm going to marry right. I'm going to be a good husband. You can make, as a teenager, you can make that decision. You can say what I said. The Mary I, woman I say, I love you too is the woman I will marry. Well, I tell you, that really guarded me. <laughs> See, talking about honor. Someone say honor. honor. And he says his mother's name was Ab Ab Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah, and he did, well, here it is now, right? Underline this. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father David had done. His forefather. See, one of his grandfathers. See, he did what was what? Right. He did what was right. And it tells you what he did in verse 3. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. Now, if you read the rest, he tells you what else he did. Even He says, well, let's go on down a little bit. Then he brought in the priests... So the, see, the previous king closed up the house. See, he was dishonorable, did what was wrong. And listen to what it says. He, rep he opens the door. He brings in the priests and the Levites who would serve God. Those like the ministry gifts and the support staff. See that? And he said to them, hear me, Levites, now sanctify yourselves. Look at this. Sanctify the house of the Lord, God of your fathers, and carry out the rubbish from the holy place. So God's house had garbage in it. Think about that. So right at the very beginning, he set his heart to do what was right. Someone say, do what was right. Do what was right. So God's called us to do what is what? Right. right. And so, you know, as we, as, as we t set our hearts then to tithe and to, and to be a blessing, then there are projects. There's some other things I'm going to bring to you in a, maybe next month. And different things God is wanting us to do. And you know, we can't do those things if we don't even get the tithe right. You see what I'm saying? So God wants to do other things. Let me give you an example. You realize to be here today, we have a business internet with Rogers. 
I mean, you know, they're not giving that to us for free. I'm just letting you know, so some of you have been so faithful, even throughout the pandemic. I want to personally thank those of you you've tied throughout the pandemic, some of you so consistently, and we were able to continue throughout a pandemic. Many churches are not in existence today. I'm connected to someone who's very aware of the landscape church-wise in North America, not just in Canada, and it's amazing what's happened. But people who are faithful kept going, kept going. Amen? There's professional services that we have to keep things right, whether it's an accountant or an a lawyer, a lawyer, insurance. So we're in here, we have insurance to make sure there's liability insurance we have to make sure things are done right. Someone say done right. All right. All right, I've got to quit here. Um, so again, we're in this together. Look at someone, tell them we're in this together. We're in this together. We're in this together. Tell them we're growing together. We're growing together. Amen. And that's why, you know, when you see different people serving, um, as I looked at you, Chana, tell them thank you for being faithful. From day one, just being willing to. you look down when he. Let's make, let's make him embarrass a little bit. Let's see him blush a little bit. But you know, there's people who've been faithful. You know what I mean? Amen. You know, sound Chantel being a blessing. You double duty. Some people have wear different hats, but just so willing. Why? I believe they have a revelation of God's house and God's work and serving faithfully. Just being a blessing. So, so you know, God's heart is in their heart. And again, just willing to, to serve God with the tithe and bless God's people. So again, number one, Purpose of the tithe is to do what? Honor. Honor the Lord. Number two, to supply God's house with what it needs. Amen? Um, turn to this one, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We have to look at these scriptures, so thanks for bearing with me because it's so important. Just give me about five minutes. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. So these are... You know, to me, these are basic things that we should be talking about as a local church. Number three, the next thing, purpose of the tithe, is to take care of the ministers and the staff. So 1 Corinthians chapter 9. So it's important scripturally that you know. You've got to know these things. You should know. If you never knew, now you know. Number one, honor God. Number two, be, uh, have, be a supply to provide for the supply of God's house. Number three, to um, supply, what did I say? To take care of the ministers and staff. So 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, look what it says. This is Paul speaking. It says, or is it only Barnabas and I who have no right to refrain from working? Whoever goes toward his own expense, who plants a vineyard and does not eat of its fruit, or who tends a flock and does not drink of the milk of the flock, do I say these things as a mere man, or does not the law say the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the corn. Excuse me, is it oxen God is concerned about? Or does he say it all together for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he who plows should plow in hope, and he who threshes in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown spiritual things for you, is it a great thing if we reap your material things? Someone say material things. If others are partakers of this right over you, are we not even more? Nevertheless, We've not used this right, I'm going to qualify that, but endure all things lest we hinder the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that those who minister the holy things of the altar, of the temple, and those who serve at the altar partake of the offerings of the altar? Even so, the Lord is commanded, is commanded or ordained that those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel. You see that? And so number three, take care of the ministers and the staff. Now, the staff are the, the, we could say, they support the pastoral ministry. And so we talked a bit about, you know, children's ministry and trained personnel. But go to this scripture and then we'll come back to chapter 13 and we'll quit. Second Corinthians chapter 12, because Paul says something interesting. He says, we didn't use this right. 
And, but it's interesting because some say, see there, you're supposed to take care of yourself. But he says, now look at what he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Now he's talking to the same church. Verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. Verse 13. He says, for what is it in which... Oh, excuse me. I missed it. What is it in which you are inferior to other churches except I myself was not burdensome to you, forgive me this wrong. Now, this is what he's actually saying. I didn't, I was wrong when I first came to you. I didn't allow you to provide the support you were supposed to. So I made you an inferior church. And he actually apologizes to them. Isn't that interesting? So now go back to chapter 9. So the same church, he writes to me and says, listen, you were, you may, I made you inferior by not making you more aware of how you should have helped me. See, so we're talking, about, we're talking about doing what's right. Just like our family, everybody having the right mentality towards that family. So thinking right. Again, not trying as a pastor, trying to take advantage of people. But all of us doing what's right as a local church family. Amen? Seeing to it that things are taken care of as a local church. And don't you think that the more we're, the more we're in line with God's plan, he'll show us more to do. We'll be able to trust us with more to be a blessing. He'll put in our hearts. You maybe put in our hearts. Maybe have a youth center. Well, how can he do that with a non-tithing people? Who t because you're not going to think about that if all we think about is ourself. Everyone got that? And so go back, Second Chronicles, Second, or excuse me, First Corinthians chapter nine, and I am quitting. First Corinthians chapter nine. So the last part. Even so, the Lord has commanded that those who proclaim or preach the gospel should live from the gospel. So again, God wants us to um, to be faithful. Amen? Amen? Faithful. So again, the three purposes for the, um, the tithe is what? Number one, honor to honor God. And always, that's number one. Always start there. Do it from your heart. Again, not from any wrangling, not from any pressure. Do it from honor. That's why we share the word of God so you can do it. Now, if someone doesn't want to do it, then that's between you and God. No one's going to beat you up or whatever. Do it from revelation. Do it in obedience. Do it from honor to the Lord. Number two, to supply God's house with what it needs. Number three, to take care of the ministers and staff. If we do this, oh, I'm telling you, we're going places. If we all today will say, Lord, we, we receive this, we're going to go some powerful places. I tell you, why don't we stand together? We're not just hearers of the word today. What are we? Doers. I want us to thank God right now before we give our tithes and offerings. Why don't we just thank God for his, his blessing in our lives? Just thank God that you've, had, you've got more than enough to eat. You're living in a nice place. You're able to have transportation. The employment you have to use your skills and abilities to bless people. Not just in the church but also in your career and your work. Why don't we just thank God? Father, we thank you today. We thank you so much for your blessing, your provision, your goodness in our lives. We just take this time to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just lift your voice right now and thank God. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your rich provision in our lives. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for supplying all of our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We want you to know we appreciate your goodness, not just in our own lives, but in the families of Foundation for Life, in our own um, natural families, what you've been doing in our lives. We're so grateful. We're thankful for your rich provision in our lives, in our families. And Father, we thank you that we're part of the family of God.
and even as you brought us together as a local church family, Father, we see more accurately your purpose for our lives. And we purpose to honor you with the tithe. We're trusting you in a stronger way because we recognize you want to do even more in and for and through us. We recognize you want to bless us even more than we are presently blessed. Not simply for our well-being, but for your kingdom purpose. So that other people can be blessed because of the blessing of God on our lives. And so we purpose today, as we've heard the word of God, we recommit. And I thank you for those who may be hearing this for the first time, or those who are hearing it but have not obeyed it. We purpose to honor you with the tithe. Glory to God. We purpose to be, bring our supply so that your local church, this place, can be well provided for. And also that the ministers, the staff that you bring into this place can be supplied and provided for and taken care of. And so, Father, we thank you today for blessing our lives. Say this after me. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. For, your for your rich provision in my life. In my life. I, just I just want you to know that I appreciate you, I appreciate you that you've taken care of me, taken care even through a pandemic. Your hand of provision and supply and blessing has been upon my life and upon my family. I pledge to you today to honor you with my tithe in the name of Jesus. I'm going to honor you. I'm going to supply the, this local church that you've made me a part of. Thank you for using my tithes and offerings to provide for this house and to take care of the needs of this house and the pastors and the staff that you bring to this place in Jesus name amen praise God somebody just take the time just thank the Lord right now just lift your hand just just before we go praise God somebody just thank the Lord praise God thank you thank you thank you we honor you and we praise you today in the name of Jesus amen, amen. thank you Jesus amen. just quietly just before we go just just right where you are thank you father we just don't want to miss anything thank you Lord for your grace thank you father father I pray that any need of any any family even right now thank you that you are the provider you are the provider of the families of this church in Jesus name thank you for touching again the, the hearts of your people Lord that person that family that is facing that need thank you for supplying it not necessarily a financial need but Lord touch that need even now thank you for supplying the need of that family in the name of Jesus Father, even thank you for your healing presence in this house, in this, in this family. We thank you today, and we worship you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. We're going to receive the tithes and offerings right now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you for obeying God. Amen. So obey God. Some of you might want to catch up. Say, Lord, I've, been, I've got this, all this money that you blessed me with. It belongs to you. I'm going to honor you. Amen. I'm not telling you what to do, but some, God will speak to you. Let God speak to you. Just obey him. Just honor him. Amen. Say it again. I'm honoring the Lord today. I'm honoring the Lord today. With my tithe that belongs to him. Praise God. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Everybody all right? Everybody good? Praise the name of the Lord. We want to thank those of you who joined us by live stream today. We trust that you've been blessed and ministered to by this message. Let us know how God has used this mes message to, to help you, to minister to you. And I'm telling you, it will change your life. And I just encourage you, trust the Lord today. 
And if you're tuning in for the very first time and you don't know Jesus, just pray this simple prayer after me to receive him into your heart. I'm telling you, God's got good plans for your life. No matter what you're facing, no matter where you are, I'm telling you, with God, you will overcome. Pray this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I turn to you. I put my faith in Jesus, the Son of the living God. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement for my peace was upon him and by his stripes I am healed. I believe Jesus not only died for my sins, he was buried for my sins, but he was raised again by you for my justification. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I call him my Lord today. God, help me now to live for you. Fill me with your spirit. Show me your purpose and plan. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, we bless you, those of you who joined us. We just love you and thank God for you. And we consider you a part of Foundation for Life. And if wherever you are in the greater Toronto area, I mean, we've got a place for you in Foundation for Life. So we'll see you next time. Amen.